What's happening, model makers? I hope everything is going awesome and smooth at your workbench. I am just sitting here at mine, sort of chilling out, uh, literally. It's a gloomy fall morning out there, and I just wrapped up a project last night, and I'm kind of soaking that up and uh, felt like uh, making a little bit of video as I reflected not only on this one, but... Uh, on the last year or so of model making. And uh, I just wanted to say a few things about that and talk about some of the things that have become my favorites in that period of time. If you guys have uh, watched any of my videos, um, you may know that I did a lot of model making as a kid, but I left it behind because of all of the normal, you know, life stuff that distracts all of us from our hobbies. And uh, I came back to it about four years ago when I bought a Hasegawa 132nd Mustang, uh, you know, partly because I didn't know any better, but mostly <laughs> because uh, I felt like it would be a good way to help rehabilitate my fine motor skills after a, uh, a spinal cord injury left me uh, initially paralyzed from the neck down in 2009. And... Uh, when I got to the point where I was about to finish that thing after wrestling with it off and on for close to three years, um, that was about a year ago, last October 2014. And I just decided that if I was going to finish it the way that I wanted to, that I was going to have to learn some more and buy some more tools and just, you know, really make a commitment. And, uh, and so I did that. And so it's been a year of intense model making work um, you know it's the main thing that I do each day it's what kind of you know gets me gets me going each day gets me out of bed and um, you know when I first started out a year ago I could I could work for you know maybe a few hours in one day and I'd do that two or three days a week and and since then because of the uh, improvements in my in my fine motor control and in my stamina and just my ability to, to you know, to, to work on something for an extended length of time. I, uh, you know, I will have weeks where I will go, you know, five, six hours a day every day for, you know, many days at a stretch to the point where sometimes I have to just stop and rest, you know, like today. <laughs> so uh, that's been good. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, along the way, I've, uh, I've learned a lot and I have found some things that I really like, and I wanted to share some of those things with you guys. Now, first of all, though, I want to say that this is in no particular order, and this is um, uh, things. These are things that are 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 uh, some of my favorites today. Um, I have no loyalty. I, you know, I don't get personal about my tools, other than that I just try to take care of them. I use what I feel works best and what produces the results that I want. So I may tell you that something is my favorite thing today. And if I find something tomorrow or one of you fine fellow craftsmen tells me about something that's better uh, tomorrow, hey, uh, I will switch in a heartbeat. Uh, no hesitation. So anyway, without further ado, let me just sort of rove around my workbench and randomly show you some stuff that I like. I'm going to start out with one that uh, may surprise some of you guys, but one of my favorite things is my bottle of lacquer thinner, which used to be Vallejo airbrush cleaner, that I can tell you is basically worthless. Lacquer thinner, I, I use this stuff sometimes every day. I use it for cleaning my airbrushes, I use it for cleaning my hairbrushes, uh, I use it for thinning, uh, obviously, um, lacquers, although not very often, um, but I use it for thinning enamels if I'm going to spray them. I use it for thinning uh, putty, like uh, Squadron, although I don't use Squadron anymore, because huh, here is one of my other new favorite things, and that is Bondo Spot Glazing Putty. It's completely taken the place of Squadron for me, and I, I love this stuff. Works fantastic. And it thins with lacquer thinner, 
so that you can brush it on and uh, have better control than trying to put it on with a spatula. Speaking of brushes, I have uh, been on a search for some really nice detail brushes, or any kind of brushes really, that have a nice fat handle like this. And I finally found these Colibri Red Sable detailers from a little place called yellowarthouse.com. And I got a set of three of these for 24 bucks. And they are true red sable. And they may not be as good as the legendary Windsor and Newton Series 7, but for me, look, I'm an absolute barbarian with a paintbrush in my hand. And I probably don't take as good a care of them as I should. And so. I'd rather pay 25 bucks for three than 25 bucks for one. And uh, those definitely uh, have proven to be really good. Okay, here's another one that I know some of you guys know is one of my favorites, and that is Badger Steinal Res Primer. Outstanding stuff. I'm not going to go on about it. I just did a video about primers, but suffice it to say, if you need an acrylic primer, that does just about everything that a true lacquer primer will do for you. That stuff is absolutely fantastic. Okay, speaking of sort of body and finishing things, one of my favorites are my UMP, that's Ultimate Modeling Products, Thinny Sticks. These uh, are just sanding sticks, and they I've got the 240s and the, and the 1200s, which you know, seems to be pretty much all you need. I'd like to see one in a 400 grit, but for almost everything, and you know, this, this 240 works great. They work good wet or dry. And the thing that I really like about them is that it's got this skinny end on it that lets you get into tight spots, but also the flexibility. So depending on where you grab it, you can control the sort of springiness, and that lets you control the amount of pressure uh, with a lot of finesse and I and I dig that a lot. Okay, something else from my little collection of tools here that I love. I found these super cool tweezers from a company called iFixit. And these are the bomb. If you look, it may may not be able to focus on them, but if if you look, look at the point on those things. And these came in a set with uh uh, three or four different ones in there, but man, these things are cool. And iFixit is just a great company. I knew about them because they offer, um, their main thing is replacement parts for computers. And I had to put a new uh, hard drive in my MacBook Pro, and iFixit has not only the parts, but they give you a list of all the tools that you need, and you can order everything from them with like one click. They do PayPal. Fantastic little company. And, um, uh, their tweezers are the bomb. Another tool company that I really like is Zuron, and I've got their sprue cutters, and those are great. Uh, but one of my favorites that I use a lot are these Zuron micro shears for photo etch. These things are fantastic. Um, I almost never have to, you know, do the old thing of chopping photo etch parts off on a on a cutting board um, because these shears are just so sharp and uh, and they give you so much control so I love those things they were I think they were about 20 bucks and just absolutely uh, absolutely phenomenal I love those things okay um, another thing that I really love is uh, these wax pencils now I, I got these from ultimate modeling products and they're great. Um, you can get them other places, I suppose. But um, the simple thing to do is just get them from UMP. I like them. They um, make handling little bitty photo etch parts so much easier because you just stick them on there. And they're fantastic. And it makes placing uh, those tiny little brass and, and steel parts much, much easier. Okay, something else that's back here. And I will grab Windsor and Newton oils. I am really just kind of getting into the whole art and science of weathering and, um, 
you know, uh, working with oils, but it's it's magic. I mean, the things that you can do with oils are just phenomenal. Yeah, you know, they take a little bit longer to dry, but when you thin them out with mineral spirits, it's not that bad. Um, I've pushed it a little bit on a few occasions, but I've I've really been trying to do a lot of different things with oils, and and I just I love them. I mean, for get for you know the control they give you when you are working you know on tonal variation in a in a paint finish is is just uh, is is really fantastic, and I love those as well. Okay, speaking of paints, uh, so I've made the journey through um, uh, Vallejo Model Air and some other stuff. And, you know, quite frankly, Vallejo Model Air just doesn't do it for me that much. I mean, some of them are okay, but they're unpredictable. Sometimes they work great. Sometimes they're just absolute garbage. And, um, yeah, it seems to be kind of the nature with all acrylics, but... Yeah, you know, more so seemingly with uh, Vallejo. And so I have gradually started to move over to Model Master Acrylics. And um, they have been fantastic. Honestly, so far they've been flawless. Um, sometimes I spray them thinned. Sometimes I thin them um, as much as 50-50. They seem to get a little bit wonky after you put more than 50% uh, thinner in them. But... Not too bad. I mean, I've used them, and, it, and it's been just fine. Um, in fact, I just did a, a project where I thinned some um, at about 70% uh, thinner, and it, it worked It worked fine. Um, they also brush paint really well. I don't brush paint a whole lot, um, you know, just details and things like that. But uh, when I do, I have found that the Model Master acrylics do work really, really well. Um, also on my paint shelf is another thing that I'm really digging on. Still learning how to use it. Uh, it's got a kind of a steep learning curve, but that's these Windsor and Newton uh, drawing inks. Uh, this particular one is Indian ink. It's it's black, 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 and it is super powerful stuff. Um, but you know you can use it as a panel line wash. I have been using it directly on acrylic paints. Because when you thin it out with alcohol, it tends to actually soak into an acrylic paint surface. Um, and, you know, how, how uh, I mean, how, how smooth that surface is dictates exactly how it behaves. But um, it, it, it acts more like a stain than a wash. And it does all kinds of random and weird and cool things that, um, that, that I just, uh, that I really like, that I think are pretty cool. So... I'm uh, definitely going to be exploring more with that. Uh, let me think for a minute as I look here at my tool drawer. Uh, oh, yeah, one of my other favorite things. I definitely can't go without mentioning this. This is my Iwata HP TH airbrush. You guys have heard me talk about it before. This is an expensive airbrush, I won't lie to you, but even though it's got a 0.5 millimeter needle in it, Man, I use the shit out of this thing. It, it does about 80% of my work, and it's easy to clean. I mean, it's just, it's a hoss, and uh, and I really, really love it. Thanks to Gil Mondragoon for turning me on to that thing. It was definitely a game changer. It's not a true dual action, because if it's trigger style, it's more like a one and a half action. Um, uh, but for me, with my, you know, hand issues... The, uh, the trigger was a game changer for me, so that's definitely been something that I love a lot. Uh, let's see, what else? Is there anything in here that's just, I think, amazing that is worth wearing you guys out about it? Okay, I should have known that as soon as I uh, stopped and pulled the card out of my camera that I would think of some things that I forgot that were worth mentioning. And, of course, this is one that I definitely wanted to uh, to bring up. My Zuron, not Zuron, <laughs> my Proxon uh, Micromot EF50 uh, rotary tool. This thing is just awesome. Um, if you look through my videos, you'll see I did a complete review on it. But, you know, it's the kind of thing that's sort of like violence. Uh, you hope you never need it, but when you do, there's no better solution. <laughs> and, uh, you know, for drilling, polishing... Um, all kinds of things. This is fantastic. Another thing uh, that I like a lot that uh, somebody actually asked me about the other day 
so I'll mention it, is my lamp. <laughs> this thing. <laughs> I had one of those magnifier lamps for a long time, and I learned two things about it. One is that uh, I never used the magnifier, and two, that it just didn't produce enough light. This thing has three tubes, and I got it on Amazon for about, uh, I think, 120 bucks, I think. Uh, it's got a really strong uh, arm on it, and it comes with all the mounting hardware that you need. And it definitely was uh, another game changer for me. Much more fantastic than what I had before. Okay, that's all. I promise. That's kind of it that's on my workbench. But I want to talk about uh, one other thing that may be my most favorite of all. And that's the community. Um, I, you know, in the year that I've been doing this, I have met more cool people online um, that, than I ever would have imagined and, and that I can even count. You know, between Facebook groups, forums, the YouTube modeling community especially, um, you know, th that's just really been fantastic. Um, I live out in the middle of nowhere and, quite frankly, don't have much of a social life. So the... Uh, the interaction has been has been really good and you know the amount of things that I've learned from you guys that have helped me improve my game um, you know there's just no way to repay that except by you know doing stuff like this uh, trying to pay it back for other guys who are uh, you know deep in the learning curve as well and uh, you know as they say all boats float with a rising tide so I think it's a wonderful thing. Um, the uh, it's it's very different from when I was a kid, and you know we didn't have the internet. Uh, we just kind of, you know, as a lot of you guys know, you just got by with what you had, and the occasional copy of Fine Scale Modeler magazine. So uh, it's a whole new world of scale model making out there, and I absolutely dig it. And a big part of that has been all of the cool guys out there in the community. So. Thank you very much for being a part of that and for making it uh, making it a lot more fun for me. Okay, so anyway, I hope that was in entertaining and, and informative. And, um, you know, if there are things that uh, you guys see that uh, in my little list of, of favorites that you, uh, that you like and you have questions about them, don't hesitate to hit me up. And likewise, if you've found something that you've that you know works better because you've already been you know been through this part of the curve tell me absolutely i want to know about it uh it's a never-ending quest for the uh the best way to do things all right guys if you're still watching thanks a lot i appreciate it as always much love